Be children or else I die. She said, Jacob, I'm glad that you love me, but I need more than just your love. I'm glad you chose me over my sister, but I need more from you than just to be the chosen one. I must have more than what I have now. I'm glad you love me. I'm glad you care for me. But it's not enough. Give me children or else I die. Does anybody feel like Rachel in this house today? Jesus, I'm glad you love me. But I want some children. I'm glad you chose me, but I want some children. I'm glad you care for me, but you did not die on the cross. You did not get nailed scars in your hands and in your feet. You did not wear those crown of thorns and have that spear being pierced in your side. You did not rise on the third day and come back by a greater measure of the influence of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost for me to just be content with the blessing I have. You did that to give me some children. And children in Scripture is symbolic to revival. So I say again, is there anybody at Solid Rock that feels like that? Thank you for dying for me. But I want some children. Thank you for shedding your blood for me, but I want to see some souls sitting on these empty seats. made up in her mind, Jacob, if Leah can have kids, then I can have kids. If you can give Leah children, you can give me children. Do you feel like that today? God, if you can give that church revival, right. you can give this church revival. Yeah. If you can win that family, you can win my family. Yeah. If you can heal their body, you can heal my body. If you can answer their prayer, you can answer my prayer. If you can open their door, you can open my door. If you can knock down their walls, you can tear down my walls. Joshua was not satisfied with the blessing he had received while in the wilderness. He wanted the promised land. He was not satisfied with the miracle performed at the Jordan River. He wanted the promised land. He was not happy with just seeing the walls fall down. He wanted the promised land. And my spirit cries out within me today that the blessing in the wilderness is not enough for me. It may be for some of you, but it's not for me. I'm thankful for it. I thank God for it. But Him leading me by fire is not enough. I want my promised land. Right. Water coming from the rock is good, but not enough. I want the promised land. Right. Man, man, putting the Red Sea and giving me a breakthrough is great, but it's not enough. I want the promised land. Yeah. Seeing my enemies destroyed and when my hands are lifted is wonderful, but not enough. I want the promised land. Yeah. Talking about it is not enough. Climbing yeah. the mountain and looking over the horizon at it is not enough. He did not bring me out to, to just let me die in my satisfied state. He got me out because there's a land of milk and honey that he wants me to go to. There's a land of joy unspeakable and full of glory that he's trying to take me to. There's a land of peace that passes all understanding that he wants me to go to. Come on, church. I know you've had great revival the past 12 years, but I'm coming to tell you.
Yes, Hannah was not satisfied yes. with her double portion, with her with her double portion from the hands of Elkinah, with her worthy portion. And so just like always, she went to the house of the Lord. And there she would worship God. She knew and she had the understanding that the only way to her miracle was through her worship. Right. She continued to worship until the miracle was brought forth. She had a miracle inside of her. She had a Samuel inside of her. And she understood, I won't give birth to it until I worship my God. The worthy portion is not enough. I got the worthy portion not to be satisfied. But he gave me that worthy portion to give me the power and the faith to believe for greater in my life. Amen. I know we want the favor of God. And we want the blessings of God but that favor fails and the blessings come to an end when after we have received it we become comfortable with it and we want that and nothing more but God favors us to empower us to go to a greater demonstration of his glory he blessed us like the king did Hannah in order to give her power to have some babies you are blessed blessed to have birth you are blessed to have revival God did not send Frank Dublin to Rayford North Carolina in 2001 to just run a handful of people no sir he blessed him and you knocked some walls down because of the blessing but you didn't knock the walls down to be satisfied with just that he blessed you to have and so when you kept on growing and you knocked the foyer out but he didn't bless you with that but just be satisfied with what you got he blessed you to have a birth he blessed you with favor to have revival in your life and there needs to be somebody that will look at the king and say thank you for your blessing but I'm not stopping there thank you for your goodness but I'm not stopping there thank you for your greatness but I'm not stopping there I don't say children Man, you ought to be thankful today. Yeah. You ought to be absolutely thankful today that you have a pastor that is not satisfied. Right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I speak from whence I know. We preach in over 80 churches a year, and I can tell you, we preach in a lot of those churches that I know the pastor is content and satisfied with their handful. Wow. It's enough for them. And the excuse they use to me to try to validate that is, well, you know, Noah only won his family. That may be true, but for a hundred years, he was preaching to everybody. It wasn't his fault on the family. Listen, he was trying to get everybody on board. And thank God you have a pastor that's trying to get everybody on board. that you have a pastor that preaches to you week in and week out and he's hungry for revival he's hungry for souls he's hungry for greater and the best thing you can do is to catch his vision fall in love with his God if he's not satisfied then you should not be satisfied if he wants more then you should want more if he wants to have an outreach you ought to show up for that Amen. 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 
good stuff right there. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. I feel that spirit with some of y'all. Who does he think he is? He's a man of God. That's who he is. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now get me shout, get me Proex 238. Well, there's another verse in the Bible. Yes. And it goes like this Obey them that have the rule over you. Yes. For they watch for your souls. Who do you think that scripture's talking about? For nobody rules over me. Well, ask God about that. He'll tell you, yeah, there's one that rules over you. In fact, I put him on the wall. Uh You've heard people say, well, I just don't see it like that pastor sees it. That's because you're not supposed to. You ain't on the wall. (laughs) Amen. When the man of God's on the wall, he's higher. That means he can see further than you can see. You're not supposed to see it. You're supposed to obey them, but have the rule over you. Because they're watching for your soul. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. Amen. It ain't the pastor's fault if he walks in here feeling down and being angry and, 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 and complacent. And the reason he's like that is because he's got a bunch of saints who's grumbling and complaining and murmuring, saying we don't need this and we don't need that. I'm telling you, you need to get behind your man of God. Pray for your man of God. Love your man of God. Pat him on the back every now and then. in my notes, but I ain't taking it back. Hallelujah. <laughs> the call of Abraham begins with the description of his wife. After the building of the Tower of Babel, we have a list of the generations of Shem. In this list, we are given eight names. Among the names, we meet Terah. Terah had three children, one of which was Abraham. And the Bible says concerning Abraham's wife, but Sarah was barren. She had no child. Amen. We meet Sarah as a woman who is barren. A woman who has no children. When God first appeared to Abraham, He declared to him, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God promised him blessing. But it was after that Abraham had separated himself from Lot did God come back to him and say, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where there are northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest. Now watch. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. The difference between the first promise and this promise is that the first involved the blessing of Abraham and the blessing of a nation. But this promise involved the blessing of a future generation. God said for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. 